Uh, Ryan Costello, Pennsylvania, who's not keeping as low of a profile, but he's not seeking re-election this year either. So maybe it gives him a little more latitude to speak freely. Congressman, good maybe. to see you, sir. <laughs> good to be with you. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I'm glad you emphasized the maybe. Let me start with um, the issue of the president versus the attorney general. Um, it certainly appears that the president's beef with the attorney general has nothing to do with his overall job and everything to do with the Mueller investigation. Do you think the president's criticisms are warranted? I totally agree with you that this is about uh, the criticisms relate to one thing, and that is the Mueller investigation. I don't think it's warranted. I think that very early on he made the decision that he had a conflict. He, uh, he appointed uh, Rosenstein to uh, then make the decision. The decision was made. I would say this. Most Republicans supported the appointment of an independent counsel, or at least many did. Mm -hmm. And so moving forward, provide uh, there's not much Republicans can do right now or should do right now other than say, I support this investigation. Let's let it proceed to whatever conclusion it reaches. And if there's one thing that we might consider at this point uh, is to prevent what the Freedom Caucus was trying to do right before we left break, and that was protect the investigation moving forward so that there cannot be a Saturday night massacre. For so how would you do that? How could you protect the investigation uh, from your branch of government? We have legislation that would essentially say you cannot uh, fire. If you do, you need to come uh, before Congress and state the reasons why. And at that point in time, if there is not, for ca if there is not a for-cause reason, uh, it would not take effect. Now, there obviously are some constitutional questions about that, separation of powers and things like that, which I think is why some have said they didn't think it would actually pass constitution. Uh, it, it, yeah, it wouldn't I, pass a uh, challenge in the I think that's fair, but your questions also are as much oriented around the political uh, challenge sure. that Republicans have, which is, you know, you hear, we're not doing anything, and I think the answer is, yes, we are. And I might also add, uh, what is the message today that Democrats have that's different than Republicans? And by that, I mean, are, are Democrats ready to impeach? Because if they're not ready to impeach over what Michael Cohen has now pled to, then they're in the same position as most Republicans, which is, let's let the Mueller inv investigation uh, play out. Well, which no, is let, me, let me, this is what I actually, I, I don't understand uh, on this front. I, I hear you in the Mueller investigation, but, but Cohen is a separate investigation. Agreed. And, and so here you have him pleading guilty in a court of law, a, the U.S. attorney in New York, uh, uh, accepting the guilty plea, not because of his word, but because they have physical evidence. Right. And accepting the idea that the president directed him to do this. That, to me, we have a system in place of what do you do when the president is accused of a crime? It starts in the House of Representatives. You guys are supposed to begin investigating to see, is there something <clears throat> here to be concerned about? That's what I'm wondering. Why hasn't that process even been debated? Uh, uh, two points. One, uh, Mueller's reach in the investigation goes wherever it can go related to Russian interference. And two, uh, if you're asking, if you're suggesting that the House should undertake investigations in this space, you know as well as I do. That turns into a political circus yesterday, just as we saw with Rosenstein testifying before the House. I don't think that the House is the best suited place to do an investigation on well, election interference, which is I, really I what you, this except, comes down but to. That's what the Constitution says has to be done, right? When, when the president is accused of a crime, you can't indict him, right? We've decided that. When the president's accused of a crime... Whether, whether you think the House is mature enough to handle this, <laughs> well, which I think is what you're saying, well, no, my, it doesn't but, matter. The Constitution didn't say but should you undertake be a maturity that, But should you clause. undertake that before the Mueller investigation concludes? I don't think you do because you still have some factual questions that are out there. We don't have the full breadth of what, what evidence uh, that Mueller does have. And when he provides a report, it will all be in front of us. And I think at that point in time, it is certainly a ripe question as to what the House should do. But here we are sitting August 24th or whatever day right. it is. I don't think based upon that plea and some of the other stuff we've heard out there that now is the time to undertake uh, Judiciary Committee 
proceedings on some of the information that we have, not knowing what else is out there. In fact, when did that the, the, stop this if Congress? I add, if I might add, it was Democrats criticizing Republicans in the Judiciary Committee who were literally trying to get Rosenstein to provide more information than he right. should have provided uh, as it related to the Mueller investigation, with the argument being that you're trying to you're trying to pull out uh, uh, what what is an ongoing investigation, right? So no matter what you do, you do here, I think that one side's going to criticize the other. I, that I get. And yeah. I look, I think you are making a strong point that the House isn't mature enough to do well, its constitutional term, duty. But that's fine. I'm you, using it. Okay. But that meaning, but it does it. It's so polarized, right, that nobody yes. can seem to look beyond their blue or red glasses. But I guess the, the question is, if you were running for reelection. Right. I'd be doing exactly what I'm doing now. No, I believe you. Yeah. I, I, my point is, is that you've got to appeal to two types of voters, right? One who thinks this Three. thing is a yeah. sham. Yeah. All right. But then you have that that slice of voters who likes the tax cut uh, is probably a little right of center by nature. Right. But just, you know, thinks would like to know you're going to be a check on President Trump. Correct. What proof has the Republican Congress? What proof can you offer that you're willing to be a check? Right. That that to me is what's missing here. Well, you have to look at one's voting record. In my case, I you know, I'm not going to you don't care about my particular votes that rebutted up against the president. I care about your votes. Maybe, maybe but I, you, yeah, you don't but have another program to go over that. But the point is, I think you, you deal with the votes. And I do think uh, to the point that I think was in some articles today, Republicans, uh, smart Republican candidates in swing districts right now. And they should have we should have been doing it for a while. And many have are speaking out. Out when they take issue with what the president says or does, because a lot of those middle of the road voters policy wise are with us, but they do have concerns about the tone and some of the conduct of the president. And in an election where the economy is going well, a lot of those voters become values voters. And today's values voters are as much about tone uh, and some right. issues related to gun safety and some environmental issues. And, and then we have the other trade issue. I mean, pr that is probably the best free market Republican right. rebuttal to what the president is doing policy wise as anything else. What do you expect the mood of House Republicans to be when everybody comes back after what was been a as Tom Cole called it a, a terrible August. You know, July wasn't so great either on the messaging. Well, Chuck, who knows what happens for the next week? I mean, something else could happen between now or even by tomorrow. <laughs> Somebody was listening to Matthew Continetti's reality show rant there a little bit. You're right. We have seven or eight more episodes to go before you guys return yeah. to Washington. Congressman Ryan Costello, thank you for coming on, sharing your views. Much appreciated. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.